I am ZW and in this video we will be giving Gabby Gabby a whole new makeover with a voice box, a booklet and a new face with painstakingly glued on hair. For the head I scanned the 9 inch figurine because it's actually quite a good starting point. I just had to sharpen some of her features like the eyes, nose, ears and lips. I also gave her some temporary hair to help with the eyebrow placement and once that is done, I opened her lips because it was slightly open in the movie when she was in toy mode. I also found a 3D model of her where I borrowed the iris patterns as well as her teeth. For the eyes, I couldn't just paint it on like what they did for the original Brazilian doll because that is just so lazy. So I dug a hole big enough for the pattern to fit in and I plan to fill it up with clear resin afterwards. As for the hair, I'm adding some holes to the front portion only so that I could insert hair strands individually and the rest will be glued on at the back. Now we are ready to print. While the printer is hard at work, I would like to give Gabby Gabby her iconic storybook from the movie. Thankfully, Pixar actually released an official version in their Art of Toy Story 4 book. However, upon closer inspection, you will see some inaccuracies such as the colour of the book, inaccurate cover page font, and surprisingly, some images are flaked. I don't know what they're thinking but those are easy fixes. I took a screenshot of the book from the movie and cut the title and speech bubble out as well as I could, changed the colour to blue and added a yellow border, and then flipped the images accordingly and printed them out. Speaking of printing, the head printed out really nicely on my Mighty 8K as expected. I was actually planning to use my Mega 8K but apparently the head is small enough. So after cutting the supports off, we will have to cure them further with some UV light. And in the meantime, let's finish up our little booklet. I printed the pages on regular paper, nothing fancy. But the cover, I printed on a sticker paper so that I could paste it on the cardboard of a notepad from my college days, which is what, at least 5 years ago? And that is why you should be a hoarder like me. The sequence of the pages are printed out a little weird because it's a booklet, so you will need to print the first page and the tenth page together, second and the ninth, so on and so forth. Cut the edges off, staple them up and we can paste the cover page on the cardboard. As you can see, I also printed a blank page for the insides of the cover. Then I'm covering the edges with some scraps of the cover to form a blue border. Then finally, stapling them all together. As usual, we have our regular saturated sending. And what makes me a happy and willing sender is the amazing supporters we have. As you know, if you follow my community post, these videos take a long time to make and yet, they don't make much money. So if you really want to see me make more videos, please support the channel on Patreon or directly on YouTube as a member. Thank you. To connect the two halves, I am attaching magnets to both sides with glue and we will set them aside to dry. This gives us some time to make the door eyes, which I am quite nervous about because I have never tried clear resin before. In fact, I bought this back in September 2022, yeah, that's how far I plan things ahead. Well, before we play with the resin, I want to paint the eyes with white primer, then the insides with some black. And for the iris pattern, I'm applying a black base, metallic silver, and then transparent cyan to achieve this nice metallic result. I do hope that the clear resin doesn't ruin this. Mix the two parts up and slowly transfer some into the cavity to prevent air bubbles because it's transparent and it will be very obvious. After around 6 hours or so, it's already partially cured but still sticky. As you can see, it's currently really flat and the eyes should be round. So by adding a little more resin on top, it will form a dome which is the final step to completing the UV resin eyes. The magnets on the head are working well, let's paint it beige to match the body. I'm going to paint the lips and teeth and start gluing some hair on the back half of the head, basically just cutting strips of hair and gluing them according to the curves, slowly filling in the gaps starting from the center then working our way inwards. 
and the second half is done. Now the first half is going to be a challenge because I don't really know how to attach the hair. My first instinct is to wet the ends of the hair then slot them into the holes but that is just a horrible, horrible idea. So after scratching my head and pulling off some of my own hair in the process, I decided to glue the root of the hair, cut it off so that it has a nice tiny sharp end to insert into the hole. Uh, good morning guys. This is the following day and that is all I could manage physically and mentally. There's still a lot of hair to go through but I would like to start the day off by painting up the rest of the face, like the eyebrows. And then the little freckles which is supposed to be black and not brown. I really don't understand why they couldn't get it right because Gabby Gabby literally did a tutorial on screen in the movie for them. So. Thank you Gabby Gabby, I followed your steps faithfully. Continuing my procrastination from hair gluing, I distracted myself with her outfit. The original collar is too large because there should be a gap between the sleeve and the collar. The button details and positioning is also wrong. In fact, the dots on the dress are too small on this yellow fabric. But that's something I can't fix at the moment without appropriate sewing skills. What I can fix is the laces at the bottom and also the socks, which is a totally different fabric altogether. The shoes are also really bad in quality and needs to be replaced. Undressing time! Okay, I'm going to cut off the tag at the back because it sucks. I'm sorry, baby Brink. Cut the button off while we are still here. And to fix the collar, I'm just going to fold them in half. And it's that simple. For the laces, I couldn't find the exact pattern, but I got one that is pretty close. So I'm just going to glue it on top of the original and avoid sewing like a pro. For her button, I dug through my mother's sewing kit and found some spare buttons that's pretty close. I think I will use the red one. I painted it white and glued on some thread and glued it onto the dress. Now the shoes. When I say it's bad in quality, I mean it's bad. There should be an opening here. The overall shape is too flat. And look at the rough surfaces and black spots. It's horrible. This new pair of shoes that I found is a big step up and it fits really well. Now we need to make the door socks. From actual human socks that have the line patterns just like the movie. Obviously, it's going to be too big, so I cut it according to the original socks and used fabric glue to keep it in place. Not forgetting the laces, which I glued along the top edge, and then I folded it down to make the socks. And just when you think I'm returning to gluing the hair, I have found another excuse to put it off, and that is the voice box. In my old Woody video, I followed some deliberate guide to remove background music from the voices. And that was two years ago. Well, this time, AI is here to help us with it because it's magical. Just drag the sound clips in and the AI will separate the music from the vocals and it's as easy as that. I'm Gabby Gabby and I love you. I'm Gabby Gabby and I love you. There's plenty of tutorials online on how you can make your own voice box, so I'm not gonna touch on that. Basically, this is what mine looks like. The idea is that when we pull the pull string, the button will be pressed, thus activating the voices. I'm going to insert them into her body, but first I want to mark out the hole and then drill it out. Now cut the string to remove the ring, then insert it through the hole, and this is what we have. I also decided to drill some holes at the back for the voices in her head to come out clearly. Alright, there is no more escape. By now, I am an expert at inserting holes. So this is what I did. Grab around three strands of the hair, twist them together, then apply some glue and rub it in. Then cut it off and rub the tips into a sharp leather tip, which can be inserted into the hole easily. Then use a tool to grab it through the hole. And once you have a couple of tips, use some fabric glue with a toothpick to glue them onto the skull and you are ready to repeat the same steps for the rest of the 5 million holes. 
Okay, I cheated. I alternated the strands at the back because, you know, thinking that we are done, but to my horror, I realized that we need to insert a second line for the fringe. I will see you in a bit, I guess. Okay, eyelash time. It's just fake lashes and that's it. Nothing much to say here. I tied her hair up off camera and now we can cut her bangs. Honestly, when I was cutting it, this was the image that was floating in my mind. Oh! No, 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 But I already sprayed hairspray on it, so I thought it would stay, but it did not. It looks horrendous. So I found an eyelash curler, and I tried to curl the bangs, and then I tied a sock over the fringe to try and hold it in place. Oh, finally. Gabby Gabby is done. The bangs are not as perfect as I wanted them to be, which kind of suck after spending so much time on the hair itself, but the rest I think is pretty good. I am really happy with how the eyes turned out because it retained the metallic effect inside the clear resin, and the best of all, she has a working voice box without any background music. Let's not forget about the little booklet that we made to accompany Gabby Gabby. And to reward you for watching till the end, I have included the files for the booklet and the voices in the description below. Thank you for watching.